probably get in about 25 minutes of it. Good day, and we'll talk to you on Friday job. We also will be around uh, this weekend with Numbers Man, the week that was, and the open source report where we look at the open source movement, Linux, and other things that affect the open source movement in, in software and both in hardware. So we uh, get there, and also security, that's a big thing. We talk about that. That's one of the, as they say, talking points, tags, buzzwords, etc., Good day. The Senate. Who are the players? What, where does it stand right now? Uh, right now, in the Senate race, you know, it's still uh, you know, one, you know, very, very tight, very intense race here between uh, Demo- uh, Democratic Senator Mark Pryor, a two-term incumbent, uh, running for re-election against uh, Republican uh, freshman Congressman uh, Tom Cotton. Uh, you know, this is one of the uh, one of the key races for uh, you know, for Republicans uh, who are trying to win a majority in the Senate, and it's. Uh, Really been, you know, the, the the most intense race Arkansas has has seen, and uh, certainly the uh, the most expensive. You know, this is basically a race where we're seeing, you know, just millions of dollars being spent on uh, on advertising, basically just blanketing the airwaves here, and it's uh, just it's been an incredibly intense race. Where does polling stand as far as the two candidates are concerned? Um, it, you know, it, it goes it goes back and forth, but you know, basically the common theme of the polling is just that this is still. That, that, that is still, that, that is still a pretty tight, that, that a pretty tight race. Um, the Republicans believe uh, that, that that they have an advantage at this point, but uh, you know, you know, Pryor has that has been hanging in there, and you know, yeah, but you know, the kind of the common theme that we're seeing is just that it's just a very tight race. Our previous guests have talked about Arkansas, especially Mr. Pryor, and talk about defenses of the Affordable Care Act, and and Mr. Pryor's support of it. Has that been an issue in this race, or are there other issues that Mr. Pryor has to deal with? Uh, that, that's certainly been a recurring theme in, uh, in this race, uh, especially uh, recently. You know, Pryor had uh, had done an ad uh, that was kind of a unique ad where he had talked about uh, his own uh, personal health experience, uh, you know, a battle with cancer that he had had, and uh, used that to uh, talk about the benefits of the Affordable Care Act uh, and the you know, reason why he voted for it. The interesting thing with the ad is, you know, during the ad he never uh, you know mentions uh, uh, mentions the Affordable Care Act uh, by name. And that was something that Republicans were quick to jump on, uh, you, know, uh, you know, by uh, with response ads, you know, trying to remind voters that what he's talking about is the law that we, you know they refer to as Obamacare. What has been Mr. Cotton's strategy in this campaign? Uh, well, re- you know, recently we've seen uh, we've seen him focusing uh, uh, focusing a lot more on for- on foreign policy. You know, that's an area where uh, he, uh, Republicans think that he has an advantage as a background. Uh, as an army veteran who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, you know he recently uh, criticized Pryor over the vote on uh, aiding Syrian rebels. Uh, you know, referring to Pryor as weak and unsteady on national security, um, and calling him inconsistent. You know, both Pryor and Cotton and the rest of the uh, state's congressional delegation uh, voted in favor of the president's uh, request uh, to uh, to aid Syrian rebels to uh, deal with the Islamic State. Um, you know, Cotton had pointed out that prior uh, earlier this summer had had, had opposed uh, aiding Syrian rebels. You know, Pryor's response has been that you know, the, the difference this time was that there were uh, you know oversight and accountability measures uh, that that, there, that they said weren't there earlier this summer. Uh, and before we let you go, Mr. DeMello, a quick snapshot of the gubernatorial race: who's involved and where this race stands. Uh, the gubernatorial race, it's, a, it's an open seat. We've got two former congressmen, uh, uh, Democrat Mike Ross and Republican Asa Hutchinson. And, uh, you know, that's, it's, it's also, you know, a very, you know, very intense race here. We actually had our first, uh, you know, uh, televised debate, uh, in this race on Friday night. And, you know, even though they've been running for more than a year and been in a lot of different appearances and, and joint forums, this, you know, uh, this was really, you know, kind of more t- a testy exchange than w- what we've seen so far, um, you know, especially on the issues such as uh, that they're competing tax cut proposals, both of them going after each other's records in Washington, and also uh, they're complaining about negative ads that have been running in that, in that uh, campaign. Mr. DeMello joining us on the phone. Andrew DeMello of the Associated Press. Democrat in this race. He's also a native of Arkansas. He spent 12 years in the U.S. Congress at a time uh, where voters uh, obviously seem fed up with Washington politics. Uh, Mr. Ross, we'll start with you with your two-minute uh, opening. Uh, what makes you different? Well, David, Bob, thank you uh, very much. Uh, you know, this is the first time I've ever run for, for statewide office, so I'd like to begin tonight by 
uh, sharing with you a little bit about who I am and why I want to lead this day. And I want to start with family. I think family is, is very important. On my mama's side, my grandpa Avery had a third grade education. He raised five children on 100 acres of land. And I mean he raised them off the land. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, they didn't have a lot financially, but he made sure they were in church every Sunday with their Sunday best on. And he made sure that they all received the kind of educational opportunities that he never had. On my daddy's side, Grandpa passed uh, when I was about a year old. And Grandma uh, first learned how to drive a car. And then she got her GED, and, and she moved to Little Rock and went to nursing school and came back home to Prescott and, and was a nurse at our little county-owned hospital well into her 70s. My parents were school teachers, and after a lifetime of teaching and being a principal and a school superintendent, my dad became a United Methodist minister and still pastors a little country church down in southwest Arkansas today. My family, my family collectively taught me the values of faith, family, hard work, personal responsibility. And I think those values have served me well for the last 53 years, and I just want you to know those same values will serve as my moral compass as I do my best to hopefully lead this state. My parents were school teachers. They taught me the importance of education. I've said I want to be the education governor because that's how we create more and better paying jobs. If you think about it, if you want to talk about employment opportunities, you want to talk about good jobs, hunger, homelessness, poverty, crime, it really all starts with education. We've got to start sooner. We've got to finish stronger. We need more career tech opportunities for those who do not choose college or those, heck, even my age, that wake up one day and find themselves with a pink slip. And we also need to continue to make college within reach for more young people. I want to be the biggest economic ambassador this state's ever had. And I'll work with Democrats and Republicans to get the job done. We're going to get to many of those issues this evening. Let's go ahead and introduce uh, the other candidate running on the Republican side, uh, Mr. Asa Hutchinson. Uh, he is an Arkansas native, served in the, as a federal prosecutor, also served in Congress, several appointments uh, under uh, several presidents, the Drug Enforcement Administration, the Department of Homeland Security, to mention a few. Most recently, the political front losing the same race. We were actually here in a debate the last time you ran. Um, What's different this time? Well, I like to say those are good memories, but this is a, <laughs> this is a new day in Arkansas politics, and I'm glad to uh, join you tonight, and thank everyone for joining us for this debate that's so important for the future of Arkansas. And like Mike Ross, I am very proud of my history in Arkansas and my parents as well. My parents, uh, we grew up on a farm uh, near Gravit on the Spavanaugh Creek. Uh, my parents uh, were not rich. Uh, they were not poor. They were truly middle class, and what defined our family was hard work, understood hard work. It was community, it was faith, it was church. That's what bound us together. And whenever you look at the work that we did, I started my first job as a, in shoe shining in Johnny's Barber Shop in Gravit. I sacked groceries. I went and worked in a factory when I was in high school. I hauled hay. All of these things just to try to get ahead a little bit in life and have some spending money. Going to college, I actually cleaned up the gymnasium. I was a janitor helping to put my way through college. In law school, I was dating my sweetheart in Memphis and I couldn't buy textbooks and, and put gas in the car, so I hitchhiked. Hitchhiked over to Sear in Memphis and our marriage has lasted 41 years. But I think about my parents who were truly middle class and that brings me to today's debate because the defining issue in this debate in this race for governor is who can best support and change the struggling middle class and give them more opportunity, more spending money, more and better economic opportunity. I want to be the jobs governor because I believe everything hinges on a growing economy and better paying jobs for our Kansans. And today you see the middle class squeeze because the government takes more and the government spends unwisely. And so, yes, I want to make sure that we can create jobs in Arkansas. My plan for computer science in every high school, career education, which is so important, lowering the tax rate in Arkansas, hey, and refining the, education. The jobs candidate, education candidate, we've got a lot to get through tonight. Yeah. All right, let's get it started. Uh, we open with the economy and jobs. Uh, mentioning that, we've seen Arkansas's unemployment rate uh, peak out at just over 8% about this time three years ago. It currently sits at 6.3%. That is 
two tenths higher, but effectively in line with the national average. Now, the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows us working Arkansans. Uh, there are fewer of them today than five years ago. Mr. Hutchison, uh, people want more jobs, I would think, and overall fewer unemployed. Uh, what can you do from the governor's office to uh, make that happen? A lot. Uh, obviously, you know, to grow our economy in Arkansas, it's about the private sector. Uh, it's about individuals taking risk and making a difference. But I have a very specific plan that will actually work and produce jobs for our Kansans that are better, better paying. You mentioned the statistics. One of the statistics today is that we were declining in Arkansas in technology jobs. That is really insufficient, particularly when we see Axiom that just moved 150 jobs or created 150 jobs in Austin, Texas because of the talent pool there. That's why my plan for growing the economy in Arkansas is right on target. It will work. It will produce jobs. We have to have a competitive tax rate in Arkansas. My plan is to lower it starting with the middle income. Secondly, I want to have computer science in every high school. That is technology education that will give our young people better paying jobs, opportunities, and will help our growing industries such as Axiom and many other companies that need that talent that's declining. There's unfilled jobs in the future in that field. We also need to talk about career education, job skills that will help us bring industry and recruit the right ones to Arkansas. This is an economic growth plan. And finally, let's reduce the power of regulations on our business and let's make sure we partner with them instead of trying to punish them. Okay, a uh, lot covered right there. Uh, Mr. Ross, kind of your thoughts on this, this jobs front here. Well, I've been involved in economic development all my life, and I can tell you that you can have the best industrial site, you can have the best infrastructure, the best rail, the best interstate. At the end of the day, before an industry locates in your town, uh, they're going to do a job market or labor survey. And, and too many times in towns large and small all across the state, there's simply not an available educated, trained, and skilled workforce. And so when I say I want to be the education governor, that's how we create more and better paying jobs for working families, for middle class families all across this state. That's why I feel very strongly about my pre-K plan. Uh, if you're a parent and you've got a four-year-old and you want them in a pre-K classroom, there should be a desk for them, uh, regardless of your income, regardless of your zip code. Uh, you look at 100 ninth graders today, 20 of them do not finish high school. 40 go to college, only 20 is graduating college. We've got to increase the college graduation rate. We need a renewed emphasis on STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. And then for those who do not go to, who do not go to college, we need a renewed uh, focus, if you will, on career tech. I still call it VOTech. We need greater partnerships between our high schools, community colleges, technical schools, and existing industry. So young people, who do not choose college. They can learn a skill, they can learn a trade, they can get a certification, and they can get a good paying job. And in doing so, it helps provide our state with that educated, trained, and skilled workforce we need. That coupled with my plan for lower and fair taxes, my plan to reduce government rules and regulations. Look, as governor, I'm gonna send a message loud and clear to America and the world that Arkansas is open for business. Real quick on that, and I'll, I'll ask you to respond to this too, but what about uh, retaining the, the folks who graduate from college here in the state, keeping them here to be part of the workforce, and keeping them from moving out to larger cities where they're going to make more money? Oh, absolutely. That is uh, one of the challenges. But I will say, looking at historically, we are keeping more of our talent here in Arkansas. And we're also having students from other states come here that are finding their future here. But it really troubles me whenever we are losing some of our best talent here. But we've got to concentrate on the STEM education, the engineering fields that are so important in the future. I mentioned uh, computer science. There'll be one million unfilled jobs in the next 10 years. Great opportunity. And it's a combination of things. We have to make sure the industry is here to use the students that we graduate, but it also starts with those students and the talent pool that we have. Let's start with the talent pool and the industry will come. Real quick, retaining those graduates. You know, one, one of, part of my jobs first plan, uh, and you can read the entire plan at micros.com, one of the things I call for is fully funding the governor's distinguished scholarship so we can keep the best and brightest in Arkansas. Let me tell you something else we got to do though. Uh, I'm from a small town. I'm from Prescott, Arkansas. And more times than not, when someone goes off to college, they never come back. And that's pretty much what we see in rural towns all across Arkansas and all across America. Uh, we need to create more and better paying jobs so these young people that go off to college, they'll have a job to come back to.
Uh, obviously, we've talked about education jobs. You know, it all kind of blends together. One thing I did want to touch on real quickly, something called the Quick Action Closing Fund. I know you're all both familiar with it. Essentially, it's money at the end of the line. Once a business says they're ready to come to Arkansas, the governor has that at, at his discretion. You've talked about your endorsement of it, Mr. Hutchison. Uh, not as clear calling it at one point a, a slush fund. Your thoughts on the continuation of, of that money? Would, is that something a governor needs uh, to, to bring businesses to Arkansas? Sure. Gov